So the first thing to understand about the bones tool in Flash is that there are two types of bone systems, also referred to as armatures or inverse kinematics. Bones can be created inside of a single shape or bones can be created by connecting movie clips together. But the two are independent of each other. In other words, you can't connect an, a shape armature to a movie clip armature. And the movie clip armature has to be connecting movie clips together. So everything you work with has got to be converted to a movie clip first. For animating shapes, why would I want to use bones rather than using a shape tween? Here I have an example of an octopus tentacle. If I use a shape tween to animate this, it's going to look something like this. It totally falls apart, doesn't hold together. If I connect the shape together using, or put a bone system inside of the shape, it'll give it some structure to animate. So it's especially good for animating silhouettes. What I find is especially exciting about the Bones tool is using it with movie clips. I find that I would never want to go back to animating movie clips without the Bones tool again. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice and kind of getting used to using Bones, but you'll love it once you kind of get the hang of it. Animating bones on the timeline is called author time. You can also set a single frame. Instead of having an animation, if it's just a single frame, you can also set it to something called runtime, where the user can interact with your, your armature skeleton and pose it. And if you want to action if you want to use action script with your armature, you would also set it to runtime. If you're interested in going further with action script and the bones tool, I highly recommend checking out Rich Shoop's presentation he has posted on the web for free where you can download his files at this link. Learning Flash CS4. He's also, also the author of Learning Flash and Learning Action Script. Uh, he's definitely check out his uh, his link and his books are amazing with tons of great code and sample files for all things Flash. What I found especially exciting about this presentation with Action Script and the Bones tool was how he uses it to animate to music and also to microphone input. So first I'll take a look at using the Bones tool with shapes. I'm in the file called octopi.fla in the movie clip in the library called to shape for armature underscore MC. There's also a completed armature in here. So to, uh, I've also got a shape on a layer by itself that's the only layer that's not locked down and it's called Octo. And that is basically just a triangle that I will add a bones armature to. So I'll use the bones tool to add the armature. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And I'll start at the bottom from where I want the armature to start. Click and drag then click and drag again through the armature pretty simple and easy one thing to keep in mind is that the armatures use quite a bit of memory to draw all the rotations and locations so if you can have less bones it's probably easier on the processor processing time be a little bit less lag in the animation. So there I've drawn bones through the shape and if I use the selection tool I can now move the move the shape. I'm going to create a very simple animation 
and this animation is going to loop. So what I want to do is go ahead to my last frame and I'm going to right click and insert pose. What this will do is create a copy of that pose on the last frame of the animation so that it will create a nice smooth loop. So somewhere in the towards you know around frame 15 I'm going to insert a pose. I can do that two ways. I can just drag and it'll auto insert a pose kind of like with a, uh, a motion tween or I can right click and go to insert pose and then I can change the pose and I'll move it forward a bit one more. This is going to be kind of madly waving, I guess. And I'll just see what that looks like. Command Option Return to test the scene. And so there we have our first shape animation. Now I'm going to add bones to a more complicated shape and look at how you can refine the bone, how the bones interact with the anchor points of the shape. I'm going to start at the center of the hip I think that is a logical point to start. Remember where you start the first bone is going to be like putting a thumbtack through and nailing it down to the stage. If I go back to another bone to add a bone, I'm going to look for the bone tool turning white, meaning I can add a bone to it. If it's black, it won't draw another bone. So these leg bones are going to be siblings of each other to the parent hip bone. I'll just add some arms. Okay, and I'm going to save, and uh, remember flashes can crash, so always save often and do lots of versions. So now that I've drawn my skeleton, I'm going to just test out how it moves with the, the shape underneath. Here you can see I've got a point in the chest that is going to need adjusting. Over here, I've got another point I'm going to need to adjust. The head looks pretty good. There's a leg. Much looks okay. And then here's another point I'm going to adjust. So I'm just going to undo all that, go back to my original shape. Now I have an idea of what I want to adjust. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. Now I'm going to use what's called the, the bind tool, which is kind of hidden underneath the bone tool. And one way to work with it is I can click on a bone and that is going to show me what 
anchor points are connected to that bone. So here I don't actually want, um, and here I can see what, I can tell what anchor points are connected to more than one bone because they're triangular rather than square. So I can see there's some that are connected to more than one bone here around the elbow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re release these from uh, this bone. So I'm going to hold down my option key on the Mac. and click on those points so that they will no longer be connected to that that bone. This one doesn't want to let go for some reason. There we go. And I think maybe this one as well as I want that to kind of stay there at that point. So now I'll test out, go back to my selection tool to test out that arm. And I can see that it no longer drags the chest with it. So I'm going to do the same on the other arm. There we go. And I saw something down here on the leg. Here there's actually a point that should be selected, so I'm going to use the shift key to add that point. So now if I test out that leg, it kind of stays together better. So it's this middle bone that I forgot, the center, center bone has some points missing. Another way that I can uh, connect an anchor point to a bone is I can just click on it and drag to the bone to connect it and that will add it. So it can be real time consuming setting this up and a little frustrating at times, but the time it saves in animating is really worth it. I also want to mention that at this point it's still possible, although probably not recommended, to delete anchor points on your shape. Here I have one I want to remove. I'm going to use the bind tool to select it and then try to use my delete anchor point on it. Now that we've tightened up the anchor points with the, the bind tool, let's take a look at constraining joints because certain joints you may not want to be too floppy you may want to have his elbow, for instance, only go this far. So if I go to my properties panel, I'm going to look for joint rotation and then look for constraint. If I turn off enable, by the way, that will make it so the joint is totally locked. So I, I want it enabled, but I want to constrain it. And the numbers can be totally confusing because every joint is going to have all different numbers. It, these rotations are going to totally depend on where the bone is on the stage and how it's rotated to begin with. So there's no right or wrong numbers. You just have to play with it. And you have to use this 
It's kind of a... It's sort of like a fulcrum and a lever. I know it's the wrong term, but you want to adjust this to be like where it hits on one angle and then the other side where where the other extreme rotation is. So I'm going to constrain it. So I'm going to try about for this joint. Um, can't seem to. Oh, so about minus one. 50 is where I want this side. And for this one, I want it about, about there, zero. So now if I take a look at that, I can see that I can bend the elbow, but then it straightens and it stays. So that's joint rotation constraint. So here I've built a whole octopus out of the tentacles I, I made, each with an armature inside that movie clip. The head is its own movie clip. And then put that on the stage with the diver. just need some bubbles and some music.